Hello everyone, Jockey from Dapper Shaves. Back in the rainforest with another wet shave. Before we get into the wet shave, I first of all want to sincerely thank everybody that has um, been following this channel, subscribing, watching, liking, or just commenting. There's even some of you that made use of the donation function in the description below, which I'm extremely grateful for. Um, so thank you. What I want to try and achieve in this shave video is, first of all, is that I've uh, restored um, a Kurat razor for a customer, so I want to see how that's going. And then more importantly, we've got somebody new in the community that wants to start straight razor shaving. And so um, this is going to be a quick demonstration of what's the easiest way to get going when you're new into it. Moreover, I'm also going to show you how to do it as cheap as possible without getting all the fancy gear. So we're going to make use of uh, a chevette and I'll show you how this works. We'll quickly do this. It's got two clamps and an overhead that keeps a blade in place. So what you do is a normal DE blade which you snap in half which I've already done and this gets mounted onto those two little pins like so and then the top bit is moved over and those pins are lined and then it gets a locking mechanism at the back and then you've just got to make sure that the blades are securely in there, nicely sitting. I normally just give it a little push with a nail and then I know this is right. So this is one of, one of the razors we're going to use. So gear wise, you don't need to go and buy a brush and soap. Okay, um, we'll get to that. If you've got a Gillette shave gel or foam and, and that's all you've got at present, make use of that. Right. So the important thing with these is to get a decent sharp blade, proper blade and half of your problems are solved. So um, the soap I'm going to use, I've used this um, yesterday for the first time and it's a very pleasant soap, um, really lathers well, but we're not going to talk so. so. Wet shaving. Um, why, why wet shave? And why with a straight razor? So, there's no why. Um, for me, wet shaving, I've used electric shavers you don't get a close shave. I've got an extremely sensitive skin, um, very thin curly hair that loves to grow in, and electric is the thing that works okay for me, um, but you, you never get a close shave. Cartridge razors like Gillette, Gillette razors irritate my skin extremely, so um, I'm not fond of them. I must admit I haven't used their blades in a long time. Um, so yeah, let's not get too deep into a debate about what's good and what's not good. Let's get focused on the straight razor shave and how to get going. So if you've got a, a foam or a gel the best thing you can do is prepare your skin up front. So that means taking a shower, washing your face. Um, so water helps um, reduce um, the hardness of the bristle, so your beard, because it gets hydrated. And so it gets soft and it <clears throat> puffs up.
and so it becomes easier to cut. Moreover, your skin has absorbed some water, got hydrated, and it's got a little bit of more protection than it would have had when it was dry. I think one of the <clears throat> big other problems generally is applying too much pressure when you shave. And these are all topics we're going to cover when we get going. So for the gentleman that wants to start straight razor shaving, um, the very first thing is, uh, assumption I'm making is that you um, already wet shaving and have got uh, another razor you can use to finish up um, the areas which you're going to find difficult. So if you were a DE shaver, <clears throat> you would have one of these, you know, so I have that in standby with a, with a nice fresh blade. So I'm going to start off with the El Cheapo. And the easy one, this is typically what people will use in a barber shop because it's a disposable blade, you can throw it away, um, it's hygienic and so forth. Right, so once you've prepped your face and you, and you want to start shaving, how do you grip the razor? There's no right or wrong. People grip the razor like this and shave with the right hand on both sides. I'll demonstrate a bit later. Um, Johan from Shaven Butcher is one of them. So um, he's also got some entertaining information useful on his site. So if you, if you want to see somebody else doing it, um, Shave, Shaven Butcher, Johan is a great channel. Toots from old school shaving. Um, he's a straight razor user um, and he also head shaves. Um, he's also got some quality content, go and have a look at that. And there's a gentleman <coughs> by the name of Peter, uh, the shaving cyclist. He's also a straight razor user and um, some useful content. I'll put some links down. Those are some of my, 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 my favorite people. Also Seth Wright um, uh, on Instagram. Um, he's also a great straight razor shaver and you can learn a lot from that. So, I'm holding it like this. You can see the scales are no not loose, that's important. So I'm just going to put it down here and you'll see it's a very shallow blade skin angle. It's not something steep like this. That's where you're going to develop problems. And all I'm doing is short overlapping strokes. And I'm trying to just scoop the lather from my face. Nice and soft. There we go. Hair's off. What is important, and the same with the D blade, is if you go straight down like this and you haven't got a steep angle, no worries. It's when you have got these uh, horizontal movements. That is when you will cut. Same with the D. So you can hold it like this, shave like this. People, in the traditional way, um, people like holding it is uh, in the hundred, so 90, yeah, 180, 270. This is a, a favorite way of holding it, either with two fingers or with three fingers, okay? Fingers on top of the shank or like toots. And I also shave like this from time to time, is I call this a pinch, okay? And especially for the nose. Or under the nose. A pinch works also very, very nice. So there's no right or wrong. Find something that works for you. You can even do this, okay? You can even have this um, pointing down, sorry. 
So just find, it really doesn't matter where this is. Decide where you want the blade and then see where is the best for you to hold it with whatever hand you're going to use. Okay? So you do the short, easy strokes um, and the flat areas, nice and soft. And you do this and you build some confidence and you get familiar with it. If you've got a good quality razor at the beginning, because you're learning, um, it is good to, to stretch your skin. But if you find that task overload, just leave it as a start. And just tackle the area slowly. No pressure. And that's how you shave. So um, I've moved now onto a more difficult area. But if you were uncomfortable in here in the transition areas, how you roll the blade, it becomes uncomfortable or you feel tense, take this thing and put it down. Okay? Take your D razor and continue shaving. On the erasers, this thing hasn't got a blade in. Um, that's why I'm doing this. I hope it isn't. Yeah. Um, the blade slightly arched. <clears throat> now a lot of people have got what I call a steep angle. If you can imagine where the blade is, it's like this. This is scraping. And with DEs you get away with it because there's a guard running the skin in front of you. If you really want to excel, start riding the cap a bit, okay? That shallow blade angle, the same I had with the, with the Chevette. Start shaving like this, gents, and see if there's a difference and let me know. So, the basics um, for, for, uh, smooth irritation shaves is that shallow blade angle don't force it you will also see your blades last a lot longer so this is a curate from a customer and the blade had some uh, Developed some rust, some really deep pitting on the front of the blade while the razor was in storage. And the gent really tried everything and he had it um, all waxed and oiled up. Um, but even then, there is a possibility of some, some water getting in there or on it. It wasn't properly clean and then um, it will oxidate over time. The other thing is, my lather is still very hydrated. Um, typically, folk have got a tendency to underhydrate. And then this becomes very dry and flaky very, very quickly, especially if you are slower in taking your time. So when that happens, stop. Huh? Take your brush, add a bit of water, go and refresh your lather. Okay. So I did now the right side of my face. I think I eventually got the camera sorted out. <coughs> I just turned it around. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I got soap up my nose again. So now comes the left hand side, and this is typically if you're right hand dominant and new to this, where the problems start happening or people find it difficult. I encourage you to learn to use the other hand, um, it's really something anybody can do quite quickly. It is intimidating because your non-dominant hand is generally the stupid one. 
But um, again, you want the example, and I don't hope I take off my face. He uses his right hand in the razor like this. And in fact, that's quite a very easy way to, to shave. For me, it just feels strange because I'm not used to it. Um, and this is more the traditional way people will show you how to do it. There's no right or wrong. Find what works for you. As an example, the difficult one is under the nose. What you can do is, you can bring the razor sideways. Hmm? Both hands. And you can get in nice underneath the nose. So, don't panic. Feel what, change hands, change, see what's comfortable for you. And then you go. Okay. So Lloyd, now your razors are done. I think you're going to be very happy. But time will tell, so um, I'll ship them out to you next week. So Jacques, you've enticed me um, into wet shaving. And uh, straight razor is too much for me, but that um, DE looks nice. I've never used the DE. What do I get? Uh, that's uh, actually a simple one. First of all, is you don't need to spend thousands of rands on a razor. What you want to get, I'm not even done, um, but you want to get at least something um, reputable so something I recommend um, is the Italian razor Fatip they are um, very cheap I think this razor is 400 rand it's brass with a nickel plating um, you never need to replace this you only need to go and buy DE blades okay and these things can go from anything from five rand a blade to something like 50 cents a blade so the high-end stuff is about five rand a blade compare that to a, to a gillette disposable um, razor and blade it's really a uh, non-contest this one's got open open guards and it hasn't got um, a closed comb like this or closed guard and there's really no difference. People find these with the teeth are a lot more intimidating, but they're exactly the same thing. There's a guard there that keeps the blade and the skin away from each other. So, I haven't used a chevette in a long time, so <laughs> let's do a, a against the grain pass. Once again, Light pressure. Short overlapping strokes. Manipulate the skin into a position.
that feels comfortable for you and shave on so with straight razor shaves this is what I quickly want to mention I was about to say I'm really enjoying this um, chevette shave I'm not enjoying but it's um, definitely on the pleasant side but with straight razor shaves the quality of the soap is critical with a D with a guard in front it does a lot of work for you by protecting the skin If you've got a dense stuff beard or very sensitive skin subpar soaps are going to cause you irritations and moreover the chance the likelihood of getting beepers with a D blade um, increases the better your soap the less the chance People will tell you it's the razor and the design and so forth. Yes, there are characteristics that help, but essentially a DE blade is ground with a machine, synthetic, they are quite toothy, and that is why a DE blade gets a coating. A lot of them gets coating, is to help smooth out the edge. So um, remember that, find a blade that works for you, if you want recommendations ask, um, I don't think that's something that should be over complicated, but people sometimes do, it needs to be sharp and it needs to be smooth, if it ain't smooth then you're going to have irritation. So once again, grip, you can pinch it like this, you can have it down, you can hold it up like this. Um, whatever allows you to have a good comfortable grip. The other thing is, <clears throat> when I say a light touch, it means the blade contact to the skin must be light, not your grip. This grip must be firm. It, you can actually even pinch it white knuckle and have a light touch. Okay? You want a firm grip. So as an example, to help stabilize, as an example, so... <laughs> uh, one of the gentlemen on, 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 on the internet does this. Yeah. and all he's doing is he's making sure this is firm okay and then he's got a light touch you'll see when I do a fool's pass my fool's pass is against the grain what I'm essentially doing now is against the grain going south to north and um, traditionally people will tell you oh, don't shave north to south you'll have irritation it's not true good quality soap sharp smooth blade and a light touch you can do four passes
I don't know if you guys got more questions um, please ask and I'll answer and um, if need be do a follow-up video so I've been doing different strokes east to south north north to south south to north find what works for you I'm not going to talk about beard map it's really something a little bit advanced um, but generally <laughs> you want to understand the directional growth of your beard everybody is um, essentially similar and that is why you will see barbers have got a standard technique. So I just go straight down and then the, the hair start blending and growing this way. Yeah? In the lower part of your neck they will actually grow up. Yeah? And in here it will be a mess. Same, your ears come down and then they slowly blend down this way. These come straight down, maybe slightly a little bit out, moustache, same thing. That is typically um, how your beard is here in the neck, it um, can be in different directions. But if you understand the growth, you can um, simplify your shaving and your, your effort to get BBS smooth dramatically. Instead of doing three passes, you can, if you really know your beard and you've got good technique, you can get BBS in one pass with a couple of touch-ups or two passes. I did use a badger brush and that was a mistake because I wanted to show something else. If you want to get going, you don't need an expensive thing. This is the very first brush I own. It's a synthetic, it's an Omega, it's cheap, um, it's, it's, it simulates Badger. This thing actually lives in the shower. I brought it out to show you that you don't need ex expensive stuff and I wanted to make lather with that, but um, somehow that fell through, uh, through the effort. So you don't need expensive gear. Also, you'll see I encourage people to use what they have. So I'm wrapping up on this shave. I'm not going to um, try and find more hairs. Really. <laughs> Lloyd, this is what the courage should be. <clears throat> okay, so. I'm done shaving, so what I normally do is, if I've got a good quality soap, so I'll use what's left in the brush and I'll, I'll wash my face and I'll leave the soap on my skin for a while. This gives me opportunity, so first of all, a good quality soap will have all kinds of natural oils, and, and, and ingredients in that helps nourish your skin, helps feed it, help put hydration back in there and help repair the barrier, uh, the, outlay, uh, the outer layer of your skin, that barrier, um, because shaving does take some of that away. Now when you put the soap on and it's got maybe a little bit of uncomfortableness or um, it, it feel slightly sensitive that would indicate a couple of things one is um, your te technique um, needs a bit more attention so either your blade's not sharp enough or you um, apply too much pressure yeah. master soap creations is the biggest secret in the market right this is a fantastic soap, but it's not that big secret anymore. I think a lot of the people have come to realize the quality of it and they're starting to do exceptionally well internationally as well. Well done, Fernando. So, you've, 
you you've cleaned your your brush and your equipment still got soap in your face I quickly want to talk about razor maintenance when you have got a razor like this it is incredibly important to make sure you get all soap residue off the edge so I run my fingers under running water and I strop the edge with my fingers to ensure that there is nothing on the other thing that is very controversial which people will find strange is I clean the entire razor scales and all okay because soap residue stays behind it attracts moisture you create a bunch of maintenance problems for yourself over time and the edge longevity will fall through the floor the same applies with these things the DE blades um, I don't use them uh, and they're so cheap that folk generally don't bother with it, they just throw it away. So I use a hair dryer. The reason for that is obviously I had water in between the scales um, and everywhere. You want to get rid of all water, vapor and droplets. So this razor, now very warm, I'm going to put somewhere safe so it can vent and um, get rid of the heat and any other moisture that uh, might still remain. Only then I'll go and take this razor and I'll go and strop it. And once I've stropped it, I will take a clean towel like this or a microfiber cloth and I will strop it because there's oils on your, on your strop from your palm. If you maintain your straps correctly, you're going to have some oil on there and you're going to have potential moisture on there. You want to get everything off the edge and the razor. If this thing's dry, it cannot rust. The only thing that will influence is a huge amount of humidity in the air. So don't store your razor in the bathroom. Store it somewhere else and maybe make use of some silica bags to help reduce humidity. I've got customers at the coast, um, if you look and maintain these things properly, store them, you really don't need to oil them. But oiling is a good solution for long term storage, but you've seen what can potentially happen. So even if you store your razors for a long time, inspect them every now and again. Uh, okay, so I take cold water. And now I will just briefly wash off this post chafe. I call this my post chafe. And there we go. Nice, baby soft, irritation free chafe. Some other quick tips and tricks. Where have we got a blade? Let's do this. If you put um, dear bowl, why is this thing so stiff? I'm going to just take a blade and I'm going to put it into a into the open comb for tip because I want to also show you something else that is quite useful for the gents. It's trimming your sideburns. So once again, 
like that, the edge can't cut because the guards there, as I bring it down, the blade cuts and the shallower I make it, the finer it cuts until it hits the cap and then it can't um, cut anymore. And this is to trim your sides. So mine gets quite bushy here um, on the side. So what I do is just a little uh, st steep angle. I just give it a little a comb. Uh, I just give it a little comb and then I've trimmed my side here. On this side we can do the same. Just go here, give it a little trim. Uh, can even cut my side here. I didn't do that when we shaved. And there, I've nicely um, narrowed down my sides. Rinse this off and you can move on. You don't need to go and buy a splash or a, a special aftershave or whatever. Use what you've got. So if you, um, your daily routine is to use something like a cream, Nivea for men, whatever the missus gave you, get something and put it on your face. If you haven't got, it's important to get a moisturizer, okay? Or a proper sunscreen, use that. If you have got an aftershave, um, aftershave splash, use that. I'm not fond of um, alcohol on my skin. Having said that, I like um, the Paraso. I don't use it a lot. Um, in fact, let's use it um, today a bit to spoil. So once again, when you put on a splash, if it stings a lot and it keeps stinging, then you did something wrong and you need to address it. I've, I've waffled and wobbled on a lot. I wonder if anybody's still watching. In any case, first of all is I want to really appreciate and say thank you to everybody that has been watching, following, liking, subscribing, or contributing to this channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.